First of all, I wanted to say a very uh, warm and heartfelt appreciation for Malver and Jal for inviting us here uh, to talk with you guys. Um, this is a very good opportunity for us to um, communicate about what we've kind of been doing in China with VR and hopefully learn something from you guys as well with what you're doing in VR. Um, uh, but that is what we are doing. Um, our, our title today is uh, How to Use Virtual Reality Technologies uh, to Teach Academic English Essay Writing Structure. And I am going to take a selfie with <laughs> us because I like selfies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much for indulging me. Um, so, let us introduce ourselves. Uh, this is what we look like. <laughs> um, Austin? Yeah, so uh, we're both American. We work for an institution called Xi'an Deltong Liverpool University. Uh, and we've been there for two years. Um, my, uh, I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Liverpool, where I study motivation, demotivation, so it's kind of psycholinguistics as a field. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I've been at Xi'an Jiatong Liverpool University for just about a year and a half, uh, teaching EAP. I've been in the field of English language teaching for about eight years now, teaching in different countries um, around the world. And um, just uh, met Austin at XJTLU about a year and a half ago, and we've been collaborating on our research since then. Uh, a little bit about our university. Um, it is a joint Chinese and British university. Um, the campus is um, in the town called Suzhou. Uh, it is a English medium of instruction university, so everything happens in English. All the classes are taught in English. And these students, there's about, what, about 10,000 students? It's about 10,000 students. It's a kind of a young university. It's only been around for about uh, 10 years. But um, really nice campus. The students, um, for the first two years, really focus heavily on English for academic purposes. Uh, so they, a lot of the students who, um, who attend this university end up doing two years in China, and then they go abroad for two years in Liverpool. And so they experience, you know, English firsthand in a, in a, in a uh, another tongue country, um, and put those EAP skills to work. So there's a lot of motivation for them to learn EAP kind of intensively in those first two years at university. Yeah, I imagine that the students might be a little bit similar to Japanese students in the high schools, probably pretty rigorous in Japan. I'd imagine uh, the students in, in China they have something called the Gaokao college entrance exam. And by the time they're done with that, and by the time they get to college, they're pretty much burned out. Um, so we have students that are excited to go to Liverpool, but not excited to put the effort in to learn EAP. Uh, and think about it, um, there are different writing styles in different cultures around the world, and one of the big challenges we have is we have all these Chinese students who have been going to a Chinese high school, and they're not familiar with uh, a Western writing style, you know, when we talk about a thesis statement and topic sentences and things like this. And so one of the main big responsibilities we have, we have a very large uh, language center of over 200 teachers, and most of those are focused on just getting students English good enough just so that they can understand the lectures and that they can write uh, a couple of paragraphs or an essay in this sort of Western academic style. Uh, uh, so that's that's the challenge that we have at our institution. And this is why we decided to come up with a VR program, was we wanted a way to motivate students. I teach first year students, Ox teaches second year students, and after the first year, there's quite a drop in attendance. Um, I mean, quite a drop. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I mean, yeah, and, and if there's something that, that really ticks me off, it's when students don't come to my class. Like, I take it personally. It means, like, I'm not doing good enough as a teacher. So, uh, so we decided to look into, okay, how can we use virtual reality as a way to motivate students to, to, to learn, to study something that they normally don't have that much passion for. So, 
Yeah, and a little bit about our institution. Before, it, it's located, you can show the map here. Uh, Suzhou, if you're not familiar with the geography of China, is right next to Shanghai, which is about right there. So um, pretty close um, to, to, to Japan and Kyoto. It was a short flight for us to come over here. So we're kind of neighbors in that regard. Um, before we go on, though, uh, we very bravely assumed that we would have a lot of front row seats, but those seem to be occupied with cameras. So if you don't, if you don't have um, some of these. Yeah, we can. Sure, sure, sure. We could uh, pass you back. Are you cold, Jim? Okay, let's spread those out. Do we have anything for you to get them all? I put them all out there. Turn in this song. Everybody get home? 25 is fine. Yeah. Does anyone have any other one? I think so. We'll use those as we go through the presentation of it. So we, uh, we knew that some people here uh, have an interest in VR. Like you have an interest because you're here, but we have some people that belong to the special interest group and some people that are perhaps not in the special interest group, but you know, are in the Kyoto chapter. So we knew that there would be uh, uh, people that maybe are very familiar with VR and AR, and some people that maybe are not that familiar. So we uh, came up with a little uh, Kahoot to gather information, to help us better understand who you guys are, so that we can better adapt the workshop to your needs. So if you could go to kahoot.it, don't know your device. Can you, can you see this down here? It's on your, on your tablet, device. laptop, phone. Go to kahoot.it. I didn't bring it right, right now. Yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, now yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. don't have a device, don't worry. Um, you can follow you can along. Follow along. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Has anyone used Kahoot? I don't know how popular it is here. Okay, one person. Okay, two people. Okay. Uh, so, um, <laughs> this is, this is a, a, a projection machine. Do we need a game pin or we just enter? Yeah, yeah. Game, game pin is here. Up here at top. So, 618 if you So, if you go to kahoot.it, you'll see something that says enter game pin. You enter this number in, and then you can choose a name to join it. This is a very useful website uh, for, for uh, game-based learning. And the music is, is part, of the, part of the game. I'll give you a few moments to, to log in. You guys are so nice, you're putting like, your real names, you know, students put things up there like, I don't know, like, you see some weird ones like God or <laughs> Batman or. <laughs> you get a bunch of those too. There's a language filter, so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> see, one, two, three. <laughs> Anyone need more time? We're good. Are we on there? Okay, we're on there. A couple more. Okay. Okay, I think we'll start. Okay, if you don't have a device, you can just kind of follow along and, you know, think about the questions. All right, I'm going to start. So they'll... You'll see, in the, this is a practice question. Okay? <laughs> so here's a question. Do you know how to use Kahoot? The question's up here, and you have answers down here. You can look at your phone and choose a color or a shape to choose your answer. <laughs> There's a time limit here, so... <laughs> No stress, right. no, no pressure. <laughs> so, do you know how to use Kahoot? Five people said yes, eight people no. I do know what's Kahoot. Okay, good. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like most people have not used Kahoot or are not that familiar uh, with Kahoot. So it's a useful app. Uh, a lot of teachers in our university use it in their classroom as kind of interactive feedback technique. But um, obviously, kind of see an experience what it is here. So you see how to use it? Any questions? We're going to now go through some questions pretty quick. So Pretty intuitive, right? All right, all right. All right let's go to questions about you.
we choose more than one? Uh, I think you choose one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the majority of people are teachers here. Yeah, I mean, you could be a teacher and a researcher, right? So this is a, this is a, a, a good point. Um, of the teachers here, can you just raise your hand if you teach English? Okay, so it sounds like every... Is it, does anyone teach a language besides English? Okay, so English. And? Polish. Polish, Polish. okay, cool. Uh, and other? Who wrote other? Could you help me to understand who you are? What do you do? Uh, develop VR. Develop, okay. Yeah. Developer, uh -huh. great. Administrative uh, English. Uh -huh. Okay, you're an administrative Okay, good, good. And was there one more? Research. Second PhD in educational technology. Okay, education cool. technology, awesome. Awesome. All right. So good for us to know that we're dealing primarily with teachers and two researchers. Yeah. <laughs> and a couple of researchers. <laughs> developer. Good. Uh, oh, boy. Ah, the, question, <laughs> the question you don't want to answer. Old lady. That's like the question which best reflects your age. <laughs> As opposed to how old are you? Switch that over really quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's so about half never used before, a few times used many times. So I'm guessing these are the, the Maurer SIG group and the members, <laughs> probably. Okay. Uh, good. Some people. Some okay. Good. Time good. This means we have something to talk about. We have something to teach you. <laughs> good. Very good. So For those let's of test you your knowledge. <laughs> uh, for those that said you did know that you were familiar, let's see if you really are. <laughs> So AR stands for augmented reality. Augmented reality. You said awesome raspberries. I did. <laughs> I augmented my reality to make raspberries. There's always, there's always that one <laughs> So if, if, if you're wondering, well, what is augmented reality? What does this mean? We'll explain in a moment, okay? We just want to yeah, test we'll get through this. We're just kind of doing a survey here. Mr. Grimmer again. Troublemakers in the back. talking and we say VRLE, all right, uh, it means virtual reality learning environment, okay, so if, if I mean, I'm going to try to say virtual reality learning environment, but sometimes I might slip and say VRLE, so if I say that, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> right. Two more. show you one way that we use it at our institution. Uh, what's cool about this is there's so many different ways. It's really how creative do you want to be. Uh, so don't assume that this is the only way to do it. Please just understand this is one way that we're applying at our institution for a particular reason. Last question. <coughs> Really, there should be more options here. You can use it in the classroom. 
We're thinking about our being our program. Okay. Good, good. So useful good. supplement the future of education <laughs> and neck and neck. Cool. All right, thank you for uh, sharing your opinion. That helps us understand kind of who you guys are and how we can adapt. So, um, just, I think most of you seem knowledgeable about this already, but just to get clear about how we're using these definitions, uh, VR, completely occluded rea um, reality, right? So it's all virtual. Um, AR is when you have the reality and the digital content kind of laid on top. Mixed is when they use reality and the digital content kind of interact. And so that's, going forward, these, these are the, um, how we're going to kind of visualize and define these terms. Next slide. With that being said, today when we have our program, when we say VR, we're referring to this kind of learning environment where the physical world is completely blocked out and, you know, they have a headset that completely blocks their view. Okay? So that's what we mean by VR when we talk about VR today. There is uh, obviously a lot of controversy surrounding VR as a new technology, and new technologies kind of generate controversy. Um, so on one hand, you kind of have this thing where this is a bad technology that people kind of make outrageous claims about it, um, and that uh, it has some other drawbacks, right? It's really expensive, and so we don't really have a method of kind of like distributing this to, to every student in our classroom. Um, uh, it's uh, somewhat underdeveloped still with um, a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of room and space. We, it, every every new iteration of uh, virtual reality device that comes out has, you know, generally quite significant changes to it. And so we're still kind of learning and seeing how this stuff comes. Uh, a lot of people feel that it is this awkward, clunky, you know, hardware that you have to put on. Uh, on the other hand, it has the potential to be really quite disruptive especially in educational fields. And so uh, there's a lot of different avenues of, of uh, growth that we can explore. Um, our program is kind of just one of those avenues. Uh, but we find on the other side of the controversy that this, this technology is very you know, motivating for students. It's very student-centered. Um, and so uh, we're, not, we're, not, we're not claiming that VR is the most amazing thing and that it is the, the, the answer to all our problems or anything like that. Um, but it does have, you know, it's, it's good points too, so there is a balance here. Uh, we kind of see VR fitting into education uh, in what's called the zone of proximal development. And if you're a language educator, you might have encountered this um, uh, diagram by Vygotsky, uh, which starts with what the learner can do on their own. Are if they're in a room by themselves, this is what they can do. Um, and then we have the outer, um, the next concentric circle, which is what they can do with guidance, so with a little bit of help, right? And then outside of that, what the learner cannot do it at all. They're incapable of doing it. And so this, this central circle here, what the learner can do with guidance, is called the zone of proximal development. And this is where we see kind of VR fitting in as supplying that guidance that gives students that, that push to, to do something beyond their unaided capabilities. We see VR as a combination, an intersection of technology, education, and innovation. So we place VR kind of right there at the center of these three kind of philosophies and um, thinking about how these philosophies interact is how we uh, came up with our, our program, which is called the Virtual Reality Language Learning Lab. So I want to talk a little bit about our specific program, then we're going to demonstrate it, and then we're going to have uh, volunteers come up to try it, uh, do some task-based learning, and then after that we'll have a break, and then we'll give everyone, as many people as we can, the opportunity to come up, put the headset on, play around with the program. So hopefully by the end of our workshop, everyone will have an opportunity to put the headset on and, and be in the virtual reality learning environment. Uh, so real quickly to introduce, uh, we have a virtual reality language learning lab. This is it right now. 
we have one Oculus Rift <laughs> and a laptop that we that is a portable. Uh, we hope to expand it. Uh, you can see over there, uh, Eric has a Oculus Go unit, and we want to. Uh, what's cool about that is they're cheaper. The optics are actually better, and uh, it's untethered. You don't need a, a expensive computer. Uh, so we want to get like uh, five of those, but because we work in China, we have certain difficulties, namely the firewall of China, the uh, internet filter, uh, which uh, blocks out Facebook, and Oculus is owned by Facebook, so we have certain challenges in expanding our units. But that's where we want to go with it. Um, uh, so the Virtual Reality Language Learning Lab, as it currently stands, is one virtual reality learning environment with the purpose of aiding students to develop their academic writing structure. And academic writing includes a lot of things, but we focus primarily on structure. Uh, things like thesis statement, topic sentences, supporting ideas, details, evidence, conclusion, uh, restatement of thesis, stuff like that. Okay? Uh, and we use it in our language center, uh, outside of class, as an opportunity for students to sign up one-on-one, -on -one, uh, sort of a one-on-one -on -one tutorial where they'll come in with a tutor, and the tutor will work with them. The student puts on the VR equipment, and the, the teacher kind of helps them through the process. Uh, we use the Oculus Rift and Touch system. And the task that we are doing is based on an activity that I like to do, even with pen and paper. I call it coloring paragraphs and essays, where each sentence is tagged with a specific function and assigned a specific color. Um, so you'll see that in just a moment. Uh, in this program, we have 30 essays that or sorry, 30 paragraphs that students can uh, complete this task uh, on. We have 10 easy, 10 medium, 10 difficult, and we have nine essays, three easy, three medium, and three difficult. Uh, easy paragraphs, easy essays are generally, the vocabulary is easier, they're not as lengthy, the topics the students are more familiar with. The medium difficulty are a little bit longer, a little bit more academic, and uh, they include a sentence that is irrelevant. It doesn't really fit the content of the paragraph or the title, the, the uh, topic sentence. And students have to identify that and delete it. And then the, the hard uh, difficulty paragraphs, uh, they have a sentence that is missing. And students have to come up with a sentence that could fit in that, uh, that spot based on the content and context of the paragraph. Uh, so that's where it's at now. Uh, we, uh, it's an iter iterative process of developing it and, and trying it and collecting feedback and again making improvements to it. So right now we have the 30 paragraphs and we're still developing the essays. Essays are written but getting them into the program is it, it's an ongoing process. Uh, so for development we have uh, relied on a couple of uh, helpful students. This is uh, Zi Ming. Uh, He's actually a first year undergraduate computer science student. So he's actually our primary developer. Uh, so it's pretty amazing what he can do as a first year undergraduate student. But we're also limited in what we can ask him to do. <laughs> so the program isn't exactly how we envisioned it. Uh, there are some functions that we aren't able to do just because he doesn't have the expertise to do it. And neither do we. <laughs> uh, but uh, we use uh, Unity 3D. Uh, which is sort of a free platform for creating uh, 3D content, uh, including uh, VR, AR content as well. Um, so uh, this is me working with them, discussing how we want the program to function. Um, this is a poster presentation where uh, over the summer we developed the, most of the program and uh, students came and tried it out. So it's, it's, it's uh, so far as uh, the people that have uh, it's generated a lot of interest with the students there. And um, the uh, undergraduate students, we, we, we were recruiting them to come program this. They were really excited and they wanted to make this program really awesome and put it in like a medieval castle with like clouds coming in and everything like that. So we really had to like uh, battle the functionality part aspects of it is what we were trying to get at. And so they, they were really um, happy with the outcome, but they were a little also disappointed that there wasn't any or yeah, yeah, they, they were quite ambitious, and it's like, hold on, hold on, we gotta get the basic functions in first. 
But as I said earlier, it's an iterative process, and we're still developing it. So we want to add essays. 